Woohoo! 100th episode club. We are going on a world tour today, but since this is a special episode, let's roll the old intro. Do you remember this? So welcome to the All I Never Did single player world. I'm Decoy and this grass block is where we spawned in the very first time. And I just realized in the last episode that of course we need to build a chicken here. It only took me five years or something. <laughs> because this is the magical chicken forest. There were so many chickens uh, the first day here. So that's where the name comes from. It also makes so much more sense because we have eggs popping up here all the time as well. I just had a flower here before. I actually brought some glass panes because my friend Duds suggested... Oh wait. Hmm. I imagined more of just a line, but of course this is how they connect. Yeah, he suggested put the glass panes as wings. Maybe let's leave them up for the world tour and uh, see what we think. So we'll come back to this area in a bit and we will follow the road uh, that way. But let's start off with the very first building in this world. Up here we have the AFK fishing farm. It's broken since long back. I'm not sure you can even fish anymore. How did you do this? Well, you're supposed to just uh, put the weight on uh, the button and you can fish forever. Oops. This version was uh, pretty complicated. And while I was fishing here, the loot uh, was spit out in uh, the water stream. And I've kind of built this up to have a view. <laughs> Although AFK means away from keyboard. So this water stream was an idea I had as a kind of foundation to give the area some life. Very cool to see items going around the streams here. I later connected a um, cactus farm as well. So those also go into the stream. Then into... I think this was the second house I built. I never really liked the front here. <laughs> Still I've kept it. We need to do something about that. But in here the fish was being sorted. I tore this down later. I don't want any unnecessary hoppers uh, causing lag. So the water stream just goes through the house now and over there to a slime launcher which fires on a clock. One of my first redstone uh, contraptions. <laughs> so whenever there are items here they get flung up into the next stream. If we hear note block uh, clicks we can run back here because that will indicate that there are items on the way. Then here I had an iron farm so we also saw iron ingots coming this way and they all ended up in this house called the treasures and junk house. So the first chests here are from uh, the fishing bowls and uh, lily pads name tags you could get so much from uh, fishing. You still can, but you need to fish manually. And the rest is uh, from the mob farm. We will visit in a bit. And here are cactus. And the sugar canes are also from the mob farm. <laughs> here are the overflow chests. Oh, there must have been a fish still in uh, the AFK fish farm. So if we get overflow sugar canes and uh, cactus, we can just put it in here for composting. Here a trash can, we can activate with this button. Night time is falling and uh, let's go over here and take a look at the wool farm. 
This is triggered once a day, just at uh, sunset. I've turned it off now, or I haven't restocked the shears, so they keep their colors all the time because we have more wool than I know what to do with. But we can also shear them manually, pushing this button. And if we activate... Oh! <laughs> there we go! I thought we needed to push the button as well, but apparently this was enough. At one point, every night when uh, the sheep were sheared, we also had some fireworks. Maybe let's go into the wheat farm and uh, have a little nap. I wonder why they aren't sleeping, by the way. Oh, I removed... No, the beds are here. Why are you still up? That's an interesting mystery, but let's sleep. Maybe the trapdoors here are confusing them. Hmm, something is wrong. They haven't been harvesting their wheat. Yeah, we need to check that later, but we have so much wheat anyway, so no danger on the roof, as we say in Sweden. We also have some bees in here, and I think something happened in one of the updates. They must have doubled somehow. I don't think I had this many bees before. Oh, there you saw the kelp farm activating. So underneath goes a minecart, picking up all the wheat the farmers should be throwing here. And also the kelp. If we go out here, down into this little interesting room, this is where everything is collected. Uh, the wheat. And we have hay bales. The kelp is being collected here. And the seed turns into bone meal. We also used to have a cow farm here. I took this sword. <laughs> um, let's see. I flushed them towards me. And then I could just stand here. Uh, hmm. And there was... Yeah. I water stream this way as well. So everything got collected into... Uh, the chest, I think. But I want to avoid having that many entities in the spawn chunks. So I just kept two of the cows. They're called Myros. And Örsvart. Oop. Oh, by the way, what you are listening to right now is the spawn area theme called Magical Chicken Forest, of course. That old intro playing in the beginning is called Unwalked Land. And then we heard a bit of the night theme as well, Sunset Hills. So I compose all the music for this series. And we're up to... 17. So where do we go next? Maybe the main house? It looks a bit strange because I modified it a while back and built a pool for one of my pets. The turtle Skalman. He's up there. But except for this part, it's a very traditional house. Out on this side we have... Oh, <laughs> didn't see you there at first, buddy. This is Slemis, my very first pet. Or actually, this is Slemis the third. <laughs> the first Slemis is up here on the wall. I accidentally killed him. And the second Slemis, I think, got struck by lightning. He disappeared. Oh! Oh! Items! <laughs> Run! We'll miss them. Pretty cool, huh? And you can hear the that there are more items on the way. Here they come, sorry. That's from uh, the mob farm, we, we will visit in a bit. This is so nice. I mean, it's just for fun, but it adds so much life somehow. Life and humor. <laughs> so let's go inside. I have a note block opening the door. I thought that was pretty clever. In here, we have a room with uh, the iron armor I used the first episodes. Here 
usually the music book is uh, hanging, but right now we'll bring that with us. This book I don't use very much anymore, but when I started this series I was kind of a noob. <laughs> I still am, but I have learned so much, so I don't write down stuff anymore. Let's see what the last things are. Yeah, this I actually uh, learned pretty recently, that you can't build anything on top of that uh, obsidian spawn platform in the end. But I keep this book around for nostalgia. The projects book I keep in the ender chest. Here we have a map over the spawn chunks area. I actually marked out the spawn chunks. This is the white line you can see. It doesn't look the best. I will remove it and come up with something better. But it's pretty interesting to see what land is actually inside. And we also want to keep passive mobs at a minimum inside of here. I'll tell you why in a bit. Here is a little brewing setup. And here a entrance into the pool. Hey Skalman. But let's take the stairs. Straight ahead, the bedroom. The bed I found in an igloo because I couldn't find sheep for the life of me. An ender chest, pretty well hidden. And in here, the trophy room slash map room. This is where I plan out my projects. And before I built the pool, Skalman was with me all the time here. And then it just started swimming instead and never came up to me. Right now, I don't know, he seems to be stuck on the sand block there. Let's see if we can push him in. Oh, it's the button maybe that is confusing him. Yeah, go for a swim. It's pretty nice. Let's actually go back to the treasures and uh, junk house and pick up some uh, bottles. I got a lot of bows saddles and uh, fishing rods from the fishing but also bottles we can bring some of these actually and refill our second brewing setup on this side a little pool i built when uh, the update aquatic was new and uh, exciting we go here under the cactus farm up the stairs we can uh, refill bottles you can also just refill by... Oh, and now if we jump down this side... Ow! This is a brewing setup I built from scratch. I figured out everything myself. And there are a lot of better ways to do this, I think. But knowing I figured it out myself... And also watching it working like this is pretty satisfying. And listen... Nice. And then we have splash potions of swiftness, which we use in uh, the nether. Let's maybe head up to this part, passing the lovely pond. Here we have uh, the slime farm, <laughs> guardian bouncing up and down, and uh, the wool farm. Hello, Papigoya. <laughs> Papigoya just means uh, parrot in Swedish. So all the wool is collected in uh, their separate barrels. Yeah, look at the amount of wool. I don't think we will ever need any more. Let's actually dive into the slime farm. Some nice pixel art. Since 1.18, this isn't as efficient because there are so much uh, cave underneath now. But the idea is to manually attract the slimes. It will come running towards me. Jump down to the bottom. You can do that all the way. And then do we have looting? No looting. Let's take the sword. And we can just stay here in safety and uh, slice. I think we'll need slime balls for frogs in the next update, so this can come in handy again. But uh, yeah, I would say we are covered for a long time. We can take the bubble elevator back up. Whew. And if you continue past the wool farm, out through the traditional Swedish stone wall, 
which uh, marks the spawn chunk border. And up here, you start to notice <laughs> some diamond ore. It's a recent idea I got. <laughs> Looks pretty nice, right? I run a short experiment with uh, memberships here on the channel, but I never really figured out what to do with it. But Freddy here and Para have some uh, diamond blocks in this world forever. But I was thinking, I've seen recently several players saying that these kind of old diamond ore blocks with the regular stone are so rare if you start a world in 1.18. But since we have so much old land already generated, it's not a big problem for me to get these ore blocks. So this could become some sort of uh, diamond mountain maybe. Could even have a bit of a waterfall with the uh, diamonds here or something. And if we go back down and turn left here, we have our first honey farm. Just a little cozy manual one that I'm not really using anymore. Where are all the bees? I mean, it's not nighttime. Oh, there they are. Everyone was inside for some reason. So we have a much more efficient uh, honey farm over at the nether outpost. So I just use this for uh, the honey bottles. I haven't really used the honey blocks for much, but maybe one day. Nice sea of flowers here and a cozy bedroom. Goodbye bees. Let's go back into the spawn area. Follow the stone wall this way which leads us up to the railway and the railway station. <laughs> I was pretty proud of that house when I built it, but since then I have my doubts. It's a pretty strange building. <laughs> up here is a portal that is supposed to be a quicker way over to the jungle. You can push a button here, which make the pigs inside of the house move out all the way outside of the spawn chunk border. When they are inside, they prevent other passive mobs to spawn. Here we can turn on the portal. Let's run this way. We really need some kind of road here. And here we have the castle area, which is pretty much finished. I've worked on it for for five years maybe, and we'll probably work on it for many years to come. But all the structures are built up, the walls, the towers. We go through here, we have a courtyard and a tree farm. Let's actually see it in action. So if we take some dark oak and some birch. This is also my own, a bit quirky design. We can pull down the platforms, plant the saplings, Whoop. and you see the dispensers here on both sides being controlled by this lever and this one, dispensing uh, bone meal of course. We turn them off and then we cut down the trees uh, manually. I don't mind that, I think that's pretty relaxing. Then we pull the platforms back up, turn on the water. This way we don't uh, miss any drops and especially in the saplings could be important. You can actually throw everything in there. It goes down here in a water stream and into the tower where we just been and into this uh, chest. And then I just sort it manually here. This darker gradient is kind of new. I still haven't gotten used to it, but it looks nice, doesn't it? I've gone around the whole castle area, adding that in. Now it's just the floor here. We need to change to something else. If we go up here, we have a sort of uh, upstairs. We can run around with a nice view. Oh, I'm so happy <laughs> that I actually finished this area. 
when we come here, I have a chest with the wheat. I sometimes fly over to our goat mountain. And usually there are at least two goats up here that I can breed. Boop, boop. I want as many goats as possible up uh, top here. I think that looks uh, amazing. So as you can see, I have a border of uh, sweet berries around the mountain. That is to keep the goats from leaving the island. But even though, oh, even though I continue to breed up uh, goats, <laughs> they decrease in numbers. So I think somehow they are uh, dying from the sweet berries. I hope they don't go extinct. This is the last tower we built. Pretty cool roof, right? It's all copper. And at the bottom we have another bedroom. The same thing here. Just need to replace the floor with something else. Can we turn off the water? Yeah. So if we float down here, we have a boathouse with uh, my pet with the best name in the whole series, I think. Fedas. There's just storage, uh, sandstone, a bit of sand. We usually take Fedas over to the desert area. Some boats. To enter a donkey boat, you need to go underneath. Let's head over to the desert area. And excellent timing with the rain, because it doesn't rain in the desert, right? We have a canal straight ahead, we have the desert smelter, we have a curse farm. Ooh. But let's visit the concrete factory. Oh wait, we don't have a bed in here. Let's take a nap first, get rid of all the mobs. Oh, the thunder stopped so I can't sleep. Oh well. So anyway, this is the, the desert smelter. I only use it for the chorus fruit nowadays, because we have a better one. And it's powered by bamboo. It's completely full, so I don't think the minecart is even moving. Let's see, are the mobs still here? Some of them. So I have kind of a target practice slash chorus fruit farm here. So if you shoot down the seeds first, uh, at least um, 24, so we can replant. Okay, I didn't count, but I think that's enough. Oh, <laughs> there we go. And then we hit the, the target block. A little lower. My eyes are playing tricks on me. There we go, that releases the water which uh, cut down all the plants. can throw that flower in as well. Uh, it is getting sorted here. The fruit is being transported into the smelter and the flowers are ending up in uh, this barrel. So now the chorus fruit are being smelted up in here into popped chorus fruit. And the bamboo is quickly draining. For every fruit, uh, four bamboo is being consumed, so that's why I don't use the smelter for anything else. And here you can have a look at the bamboo farm. Observers detecting when the bamboo are growing uh, three high. And then the pistons are being activated all the way there. And we have a minecart going under, picking everything up. It should soon be coming rolling here. Ah, there it is. This is also where I get all my sand, of course. And in the process, I'm leveling out the desert all the way over to the savanna there. I think that looks pretty cool. You just need to come up with some sort of uh, wall design there. And then I tried out <laughs> this crazy path design. And now let's enter the concrete factory. So I think... We actually need orange. Yeah, let's do orange. Take some dye. 
take uh, sand and gravel, make the powder, and then what you can do in the Java version of Minecraft is to put the powder in the offhand. Now we will actually not fill it up. We we'll put the rest in the dropper here. So we just press left and right mouse keys at the same time, and this happens. And look at the offhand, it's not decreasing, it's actually increasing slowly. And that's because uh, we get more powder from the dropper above. And there we go, two stacks of concrete. Oh, I think, let's look at the projects book again. We have more of a to-do list. Yeah, one stack of yellow concrete to hunting arena. Let's get that. What's 35 plus 29? 50, 64. Ah, <laughs> so that will be a stack, right? Oh yes, quick maths. So Fedas's main purpose in this world is to be loaded up with sand. He has a powerful storage system with uh, chalker boxes. Let's take uh, this one just to show you. We get some sand, put it in the chalker box, load it up. He is already loaded as you can see. And we'll head over to the super smelter. We are raising a dolphin here. The super smelter gets very hot. So we have to have some sort of uh, exo exhaust. <laughs> what do you call these? Something to cool all the warm water. Use your imagination, okay? We also made an effort to make some beautiful landscaping around here. So let's sail closer, pick up the chalker box, run up the stairs and we load it into the super smelter. Oh, always forget uh, chalker boxes do that. So we put it in here, which makes the minecart go. It needs to be filled up with about a stack of items or else it will just stay here. With this block goes back fill up a bit more and go again let's fix uh, the sign here boop, boop. we fill the fuel here which are blaze rods uh, i can't stop loving this thing if we want the minecart to go with less than a stack we can just remove uh, the torch here and everything will be collected in this chest. I will build a proper glass building eventually. I'll do it proper. But let's take Fedas back to the boathouse. With a nice view here. I still haven't got used to the castle area being finished. Actually, before we park Fedas, I want to show you the river. We recently turned this into a lush river, meaning vegetation from the lush caves. This made such a difference. Isn't this lovely? A bit cramped though. <laughs> I've tried to mix uh, the lush cave vegetation with the dark oak vegetation, which is the original biome here. Pretty cozy. I'll be okay. You can rest now. Reference from which movie? Where do we go next? Yes, the mob farm. So down here, we have a new entrance to the sweet mob farm. Sweet being sugar canes, because this is a sugar cane powered mob farm. Little sneak peek here. I've used the glow lichens as a very soft light source. You can see the zombies tracking me. So let's see if we can see it in action. We go down one more floor. Hmm, there we already have a zombie falling into the trap. And again, a minecart is going under here, picking up all the drops. So while we wait, on the sides we have decorated with the glow squid tanks. This was quite a pain. Oh, there was 
There we go. <laughs> uh, it looks funny. So it's uh, your standard sugarcane farm, but it also releases the water and turns on the lights, just as a cool visual effect. So as I was saying, in 1.17, the Caves and Cliffs update part 1, glow squids were spawning in dark areas below sea level if there were natural stone underneath. The problem was, axolotls also spawned under the same conditions <laughs> and they eat glow squids. But I finally got enough glow squids to have these tanks look this beautiful. And as you know, axolotls only spawn in uh, lush caves now. Glow squids also sometimes spawn down here, which is perfect. <laughs> so they just float into the magma blocks and die. So we get glow ink sacs as well. Can we see it one more time? There we go. No mobs on that platform, unfortunately. Oh. And then we can sleep on the way up, if necessary. What is left up here in the spawn area? Oh yeah, we have the chicken farm. So the way it works is that chickens are hatched up there and they are slowly falling downwards uh, for 20 minutes. And just before they hit the ground, they grow up to adults. Oh, did we just miss one? Ah, uh, let's wait for the next one. So you see you have uh, raw chicken and feathers there. Right now the minecart underneath is turned off. Should actually make it start rolling. Like this. But we have so much feathers, I don't know what to do with everything. Not until we get an um, ink farm at least. So that chicken is almost all the way down. Let's wait for it to fall. Here it comes. And you will see it grow up just before it hits the ground. <laughs> uh, I'm not a monster, okay? It's uh, fun. The farmer here was, yeah, you saw his name Outcast. I don't think he likes me. He didn't have the wheat trade. Uh, he was the original farmer in the wheat farm. But I let him go and replaced him with three others with the wheat trade later. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, great. Kind of describes your mood, huh? We can actually go up to the top here and turn the chicken farm off. So the chickens are down here under the trapdoor. They are all named, so they won't take up the passive mob cap. And I've just placed some levers somewhere. Yeah, this one and this one will lock the hoppers, so the eggs will stay here and not go into the dispensers. The dispensers are, of course, uh, hatching the eggs. Kind of a nice view. Not very good for YouTube, I guess. Oh, actually, in these towers, I forgot to show you that, we have uh, villagers. Hitcher. This one is the armorer, Vapensmed in Swedish. So we don't have to craft uh, diamond weapons or tools or armor. That tower doesn't have one, but uh, that tower and ooh, this tower as well. My idea from the beginning with these roofs was that they would each symbolize an achievement. So first we went into the nether, then into the end, then we conquered a guardian temple, then... <laughs> I don't know. I guess we made a tree farm and then copper got into the game. I don't know. Always fun to have some ideas uh, in your world at least. Let's also head over to the library. Let's grab a boat because this house has maybe the most fun entrance of them all. This is also how I transport villagers in here. Woohoo! <laughs> it breaks uh, on the cactus and uh, we can collect it here again. Here I have free roaming librarians with all the most important trades. 
Here we have Flamman with uh, the flame book, Reparatörn with the uh, mending, and uh, I think he has something else. Yeah, he has this old great bookshelf uh, trade, and Turgubben with uh, Fortune. And on the downstairs, we have collected all the books. This is mostly for easy remakes of all the armor and stuff, if I should die and lose everything. Ah, nice blue sky. For the books we don't have librarians for, we have an enchantment uh, set up here. So if we walk down here, we get one book and three lapis, so we can just uh, enchant something at random. Feather falling, that's a good one. And I guess we'll just run over to the boots enchantments and place it here. Hey, don't do it. You are still on the clock. Oh. I can never make these guys take their job seriously. We are back at the spawn area and uh, let's check out the mines next. Here <laughs> I have a small vines farm. I use this mostly for making mossy stone variants. But since we can use moss for that now, this isn't really needed. But I tried to make some sort of berries design here. So red berries, blueberries <laughs> and so on. Not every idea needs to work. <laughs> Now we are down in the branch mine. Before Caves and Cliffs part 2, we used to make one of these branch mines at level 11. And then we got all the good ores. Underneath here goes a minecart, turning on the lights and also picks up the drops from the chests. Here we have another pet. This is uh, Silvris, the ooh, silverfish. And this is where the drops are being sorted. I recently changed out the item frames for signs instead. I think uh, they create less lag. Up here, a bed. And a very old school <laughs> furnace system. Slime block launcher to get up. One of my early redstone contraptions. Now, if we run a bit this way, we can actually see the bottom of uh, the mob farm. So here we should see the minecart going under the magma blocks. This is where the mobs uh, die. This is probably enderman damage. <laughs> so we can actually go up here and look at the item collection system. So if mobs are dying, the minecart will stay here for a while and uh, send all the items up. Let's see if we can trick the zombie to fall down here. Here we have the other side of uh, the stairway down to the mob farm. Ah, nice. One of the platforms triggered there. Let's run over to the item elevator. There they go. And they also triggered uh, the note block up there, making the click sound. Now, if we go back to the storage system and then continue down these stairs, we have a newer mine, <laughs> actually a gold mine. We also have a proper gold farm in the nether, which we also will visit. But this mine is for the gold ore blocks. We use those as decoration. I have uh, mimicked the design of the old branch mine, just for nostalgic reasons. Now we're back to where we started the video. And here we have a stable with the snömula. Inside here we have a fox. Where are you, buddy? There he is, Mikkel Rev. He is helping us with a specific task, Ow. which I will show on the way back. Snömula carries uh, snow and ice related stuff. So let's ride her over to the snowy area. Here we have a nice pathway, which I haven't finished. Just a bit in the middle here, which is a bit rough around the edges. Here another view of the super smelter from the other side. Up here a nice field with a pond. This is probably where I'll build uh, the glass storage building. And if we go through the traditional Swedish stone wall, we have the rabbits. Let's see, can we 
attach you to this. We cannot. But as a professional, I also brought regular fence. So they want my golden carrot. <laughs> if I take that away. Hey, Snemula, what are you doing? Maybe she's also attracted to the carrot. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I built this bunny area in the preparations for bundles. Because you needed uh, rabbit's uh, hide, I think, to make them. <laughs> I feel pretty bad actually thinking about it. <laughs> hey buddies! But it turned into a fun landscaping project. And as long as bundles isn't in the game, they will all survive. Let's see if Snowmula can make a two block jump. Of course not. Can you climb ladders? <laughs> oh, you did it! Well done! So let's continue this way over a temporary bridge and into the snowy area. This is so atmospheric, I think. And you see the cabin in the distance. Here I have some polar bears. Oh yeah, I should landscape a bit more around here. I've forgotten about that. Up the stairs and here we have another stable. Lightning rod, the snow cabin, some llamas. I built this cabin when we just got the diorite stairs and the campfire so we can get smoke. I still love this place. Here a powdered snow farm. <laughs> now it's much easier just to go find a snow mountain. But when I built this, they didn't exist yet. So sometimes when it uh, starts raining, I fly over here and uh, just AFK for a while. Let these cauldrons fill up. Let's go say hello to Fjellis. Don't run out. Hey Fjellis. Do you have my lead in your mouth? He's always munching on something he's not supposed to. Take this instead. Thank you. Hmm. Here we have a nice fireplace. You can sit and relax. A classic snow golem farm. You can get uh, snow layers and uh, snowballs depending on which shovel you use. A bunk bed up here. And we can jump down at the slime block here so we don't hurt ourselves. Let's go outside without Fjellis escaping. I don't know why he's so eager to get out nowadays. And this way we have an ice farm. So these blocks are obstructing the ice to melt. So they, this will always be water. So we mine the blocks and it will automatically refreeze. And we can continue all of these platforms downwards if we want to, if we need a lot of ice. And here the last one, more Enderman damage. And here we have a fun boat elevator. Now the boat isn't supposed to be out like this, but mobs are walking on the pressure plate. So if we put this back into the dispenser and come running here, the boat will appear, we jump in, just hold forward, and the boat goes back uh, to the dispenser again. Ow! And we can come up here and either go again in the ice uh, farm, or leave the ice here. Let's take Snömula back. Nice with a bit of adventure, isn't it? Now back here at the stable comes the fun part. So we pick up an egg, throw it at the target block, and the trapdoor is open. Now Mikkel Rev's function here is to take care of any chickens that might uh, hatch. Let's see if we get one this time. No. Oh, hey! <laughs> so I think we have seen everything in the spawn area now. So let's go maybe into the nether. Hello boys! The base here on the nether side is something I want to rebuild soon. But we have windows here over the large lava lake. Some custom uh, nether trees. 
before the large fungi was in the game. Furnace set up, chests, and on this side, we have... oh, I have forgotten about this. Hello, Dr. Fleskotlet. I haven't used this much at all. Should we try? Run over the pressure plate, get the carrot on a stick. We can uh, jump up on the pig. <laughs> and we're on our way. In these dispensers, we have the splash potions of swiftness, as we saw before. We were making in that uh, potion brewery. So if we go a little bit this way, and boop, and then <laughs> it's so slow. Oh wait, I haven't got the gold helmet yet. <laughs> go back. We will be shot. Yeah, so anyway, oh, this was fast, finally. <laughs> this was a fun experiment, but uh, yeah, when I rebuild here, I'll probably leave Dr. Flescotet out of the center of it, at least. Let's actually switch to the nether gear. Golden helmet, the nether boots. Put back the stick here. Now, if we run to the other side, I will change this row design up <laughs> as well. I will change most of the things around here, except for this tunnel. But we'll go under it and continue this way. And eventually ow, we'll get to the hunting arena. Ta-da! And we can leave our building material here and check this place out. It's very empty. I still have some spawn proofing to do around here but the idea is wither skeletons will spawn here and since they are quite tall they will not be able to move here so we can just run around slay them here a little peek into the blaze farm this hunting arena design is based on a video from carlock let's grab the correct sword the wither widowmaker maybe something on the lower floor. Extremely empty today, but we can at least go down here and see the bottom of the blaze farm. This is where they will all gather. Here they come. Wacky wacky. And we'll get some fuel for our super smelter. Boop. This floor isn't complete yet, but I think we have enough iron finally to finish this design. These iron trapdoors are so expensive. Here on the top floor, that is uh, just a spawn-proof area. That magma cube must have spawned up there. We can have a look down into the blaze farm. He... Ow! Manu, oh Manu! Come on! Maybe let's fly away and come back and see if uh, we get more spawns. There we go. So the wither skeleton can't move except for their little stone sword. We can just whack them. We have an item sorter here. We just dump off the loot. And it goes in here. The cool thing about this sword in combination with the beacon is that we have both strength 2 and smite 5. That means we can one hit kill the zombified piglins. Look at this. Huh? So nice. Yeah, it definitely needs more slabbing. So let's head back to the nether base. And whoop, whoop, turn right here. We have a way up to the nether roof. Let's get it started. Slowly. Up the railway here. Up the ladder. And then up another minecart. Here we have the old combined iron and gold farm, which doesn't really work anymore. Because the piglins that aren't zombified, they have crossbows, and I suspect that they, when they try to shoot the iron golems, they sometimes shoot the villagers. So they are soon going extinct here, if I AFK by the farm, which is why I don't do that anymore. But we also have some note block builds here. This is a wind chime.
It's uh, randomized, inspired by Etho, as usual. And here we have a drum machine. Let's first turn on the randomized loop. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense until you turn on this. Ooh. Oh no, piglins are spawning. We better hurry. On this side we have bamboo farms at the end there. And when the bamboo triggers the observer, just the usual bamboo farm, you know, that triggers a note block chord. We might hear one soon. Oh, there you go. I think that was uh, the pumpkins. Let's head back down slowly. If we go this way, here we have the portal to those uh, train pigs I showed you before. And here, the tunnel to the jungle area. The ceiling is flat, so you can fly that way or take the more relaxing minecart. And here we are. This portal leads to the jungle area. Or one of the jungle areas. This is the parrot farm. And if this loads in, it's pretty clear. Let's sleep. We have a bubble elevator up to the buildings. This is the main house. In here I have some masons. They helped me a lot when I was digging out the hole there, repairing my tools. Some chest with the different materials. So, as you can see, I've slabbed the area around here to make it not spawnable. So the goal, of course, is to get parrots to spawn down here. I have a little AFK spot right here. <laughs> and I'm slowly cutting down the jungle to make it more efficient or <laughs> to make it work in the first place. We have only managed to spawn in two parrots <laughs> so far. This is the storage building. All the blocks we get from removing the jungle. Trash can here. On the other side, that's just a facade, but I think I will have uh, some farms in here. Melons, ferns and so on. I've failed for many years to get this to work, but I'm not giving up. And here we can drop down to the portal again. Ow. And let's continue in the nether. So back to spawn is that way, but if we continue this way instead... We'll come to the nether outpost. Here we have the real gold farm, designed by a logical geek boy. And I'm very happy with the pillars on the sides. They are different kind of gold ore blocks. And a solid gold block in the middle. I love watching this thing. So this whole area was solid netherrack when I got here. So I've dug all this out by hand. Some of it by TNT as well. And that creates such a nice view. So I dig down to lava level. And on the sides continue downwards. You can look into the lake a bit. This is also my very slow method to <laughs> mine for ancient debris. Down here I have my two bartering picklins. Covered in gold. Let's see if we can demonstrate. If we take... Four stacks of nuggets, what's that in ingots? 28. So 14 each. You can put these in the droppers. You push the button. And they start to barter. Also a logical geek boy design. And the drops from zombified piglins and from the bartering goes into the storage system here. So we get a lot of nice stuff here. Back here we have a zombie, please press on the prize crusher. I send him in uh, now and then here to my villagers. Look at these prizes, especially the nether wart. This is my main method to repair my tools. You see the nether wart farm there. 
It's just a manual one, but it's enough. Oh, these endermen drives me nuts. Here we have a honeycomb farm. Now the shears have run out and I haven't refilled them. See, they are empty and I've stopped the minecart as well. But look at all of these honeycombs. Whew. The main purpose was uh, to craft beehives. If you remember, the floor in the library was made uh, by beehives and a lot of them. But we can also um, make candles, of course. You have been a great help. Yes, you have. Here, a furnace setup. You know, I get an insane amount of uh, netherrack. So this is a way to smelt that up into nether bricks, which I use for spawn proofing over at the hunting arena, as you saw, and also for some of the road designs. We can also lock the hoppers underneath and use uh, the XP that have been building up there to repair tools. Here, a primitive setup for creating huge fungi to get mostly the trap doors. And we have some turtle eggs. The idea is to continue the platforms all the way up to the nether ceiling. Just imagine with platforms all the way and then eventually all of this mined away. This will be insanely efficient. <laughs> yes, walk into your death. Oh, yeah, the furnaces are powered by lava. It's one of those uh, lava farms here. If we continue the stairs upwards, we have a portal leading to the new 1.18 terrain. But it wasn't much interesting stuff on the other side. Let's head back to the nether base again. If we go out this way instead, and fly a bit this way, Heep. we will eventually come to the mining outpost. I set up a speed mine here when 1.17 was new, with deep slate and deep slate ores. But since then we have moved shop. Let's go up into the house. Here we go, we have one corner for each ore, <laughs> so gold, lapis, diamond, emerald, redstone, and copper. I still really love the deep slate ore blocks. Let's go down and down again this way. Here we have a special mob, a zombie holding a gold ink sack. This is just something I like to do in my world, because I keep it through the years. So at one point, the zombies could pick up uh, glow ink sacks, but they can't do it anymore. If you start a new world, you will never see this. So kind of unique. If we go this way, we have the new mining outpost, and also an amethyst farm. I just mine these manually. This was at the time when the amethyst geodes could generate close to sea level. So I have a building on top here as well, which we will check out in a bit. Run down here. We have the storage and also a little dripstone setup. If we push the button here, the dripstone gets harvested and collected in the chest. Down here, um, I first had an idea of only mining with the fortune pick. So we collected the cobblestone here and it got smelted two times, first into regular stone and then into smooth stone. And then we could use the furnace XP to repair the pick. But I gave that up <laughs> after a while, and we have enough smooth stone for the whole Minecraft life, I think. Here we are smelting the raw ores. So right now, iron. And your standard item sorter. You leave everything in the chest here, and it gets sorted. We have one mason in place. I'll have a whole family here eventually. So just mining like this is one of the most relaxing things I know. 
<laughs> strangely enough. So I'll go here a lot of camera, I'll imagine. Another geo down there. So let's have a look from the outside. I think we're able to fly out here. Woo! Boom! Over there we have the main house. Very spontaneous design. Kind of looks like a church. That's one reason the music sounds the way it does. And this is the building surrounding the amethyst farm. I also built this without any before planning. I think it turned out pretty nice actually. I have some fun plans for the surroundings here. And that includes our screaming goat. Let's see, what do we have left? Oh yeah, the ender ender. So let's go down here. Through the portal first to the stronghold. I found this going by boat up there. And the stronghold was glowing at the bottom. But I still went back to the stronghold to try and find the way here. Because this is the first one I found myself in Minecraft. I designed it with black concrete and uh, windows so you can see into the ocean. Pretty cozy somehow. Although I think there is scary music playing right now. Because that is what I wrote for the stronghold. Okay, let's jump in. Here we have the tunnel to the Ender Ender. These colors kind of match, right? It's a end theme somehow. Or maybe more like candy lollipop. <laughs> Usually we have been drinking a swiftness potion as well, so we often run faster here. And here we can smack. It's nothing special really with this Enderman farm, but it's so efficient. You can turn on the pearl dispensing uh, mechanism. I saw I Jevin build this Enderman farm and then uh, Chalkercraft made a tutorial on it. On this side we have a moss farm <laughs> and I'm actually thinking about maybe tearing this down. It wasn't as efficient as I thought and it's just a place for Enderman to teleport to. But let's turn it on so you can see it in action. Oh, and they stole the moss block, of course. So let's get a new one. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, it's just a mess. Oh. There we go. Oh, and you see it's created cobblestone. But here's the design of the Enderman farm. <laughs> I really like this. It's uh, kind and warm somehow. Let's turn off all this noise and fly back to the main island and we should... Nice. I think we only have one place left to visit and that is our village. Mostly so you can hear the music. I've started a legit raid here once. That was pretty fun. We should do that again sometime. I built up this protecting wall all around. And I've kept the default houses here. I started a project where I gently enhanced them. Just added some blocks here and there to make them a little more attractive. I swapped out the cobblestone for white concrete on the church. Added some details on the well. It's nothing special really, just a bit of nostalgia. This being the first village we found in the series. So I feel like I'm just getting started. Many more episodes to come. What do you think about the wings, by the way? I think I like them. If you get cravings to check more of this series out, you have the playlist here to the left and a pretty good video here to the right. Also, I haven't actually set up a world download. I don't know if any of you are interested. If you are, let me know in the comments and I'll try to set something up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.